Frank, we seem to find in the modern day that there is an increasingly uh, interesting, sometimes hostile, communication between science and religion. If we take a step back from that, and I ask you, as a fundamental physicist who has tremendous breadth of the field from cosmology to the, to the applications of physics and see this very wide area, how can you uh, think about what science can say legitimately about the possibility of the existence of God? Well, God is a very elastic concept. Uh, what's meant by the word to a fundamentalist Hindu is very different from what the word means to a fundamentalist Christian, and both of those are very different from what's, what it means to a Unitarian. <laughs> so there's a lot of vagueness to this question, uh, but I'll try to be constructive in, in answering it. Uh, the first thing that science says is that uh, many of the traditional ideas about God, about how God acts in the world, uh, are, are definitely wrong. They're naive. And I won't belabor that. There's you know, enormous literature on that, and you know, the arguments are well known. What about deism? The thought that there is some supernatural force, intelligence, power that set the laws in motion and then absolutely disappeared a, 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 an impersonal force that has no relationship to human beings or any particular religion system, but, mm -hmm. but is this primal force? I think it's gratuitous. <laughs> you can add that if you want, but I think Mr. Occam with his razor would uh, shave it off for you because it's, it's just an additional <laughs> hypothesis that doesn't uh, to me, add any explanatory power. Where some would say it, 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 it arguably is necessary is as an explanation for where these simple laws of physics uh, came from. With the, with the uh, uh, clear uh, uh, definition that this deistic force uh, is, it has self-existence as, as, as part of its nature. So you're defining it as self-existent. <laughs> To, to end an infinite regress of what caused that and what caused that. Because you're stuck if, if, <laughs> with, with the laws of physics. I don't know how to do justice to it. <laughs> being being the, the, the primal permanent thing, which, which is very yes, right. elegant and nice, but, but uh, you know, that's quite well, unsatisfying. Again, I think, it's, I think it's explaining something simple in terms of something complicated. We don't know, we don't know how to make or account for such uh, a prime mover and intelligence. So it's, it's something that's just an addition to the description of the world that is not suggested directly by anything we know today. Uh, you can take it or leave it. And <laughs> I think uh, to keep things simple, I think it's preferable to leave it. It's, it's a gratuitous hypothesis that at least to me, it doesn't explain anything. But if it makes you feel good, <laughs> sure. Another thing you learn from science is that the ancient texts, which are the basis of most of the traditional religions, uh, don't do justice to what we know about the universe now. Uh, they, with rare exceptions, don't have uh, a notion of that the universe could be enormously large, uh, much less that it can contain extravagant numbers of dimensions in quantum mechanics, and uh, or that it's so very old, uh, or most of all, I think most profoundly, that it's so comprehensible that it can be understood in terms of precise mathematical laws. You just don't find that in the ancient text. So uh, to me, they, they seem kind of cramped and unimaginative. So it's not so much even that they're wrong, although some details are wrong. It's just that they don't do justice to what we know today. Some scientists, philosophers, yes. certainly theologians today, 
who uh, are apologists or defend the religious right. position would claim that just that comprehensibility is evidence that some intelligent outside force, whatever it may be, has so designed the universe so that it could be comprehended. Well, maybe, but I think that's a f fallacious logic because it's explaining something that's basic and simple in terms of something that's <laughs> very complicated. We know, I mean, all the examples of intelligence we know about, humans or, or computers, are very complicated objects. And that complication is the basis of their intelligence. You know, you have to make brains with complicated <laughs> chemistry and complicated circuitry, and we really don't understand in detail how it works, but it's definitely complicated. Or computers, which we do understand, they are very, very complicated if they do impressive things. So to say that there has to be some intelligence behind what we see begs the question of, well, who made the intelligence? What, what, is, what does it consist of? So I'm not very impressed by that argument. Having said that, I, I do think that um, there's a yearning for transcendence that, that we all feel as humans. We, you know, uh, we want to be so part of something that lasts, something bigger. And uh, I do think science offers both consolation and also new possibilities in, uh, in those regards. I think that uh, intelligent life here on Earth, if we don't mess it up, is in its infancy. I think, so, well, here's, here's our friend Archaeopteryx. I identify with Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx was the transitional form between dinosaurs and modern birds. Mm. You can see it's beginning to be a bird, it's got feathers, but it's also got talons and a uh, kind of inefficient tail. <laughs> kind of a mean face, and too. A mean <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Ar Archaeopteryx took the first steps towards flight, and I think humans are taking the first steps towards a uh, higher form of intelligence. I don't, I think we have sort of a level of intelligence that we inherited from evolution and we can enhance it a little bit. But I think the systematic enhancement of intelligence and other capabilities is just beginning. And uh, with genetic engineering, with artificial intelligence, some combination of those, I certainly don't see exactly what's going to happen. But I think big things are going to happen. and. Uh, humans will evolve or the descendants will evolve into a level of power and intelligence that we can only dimly perceive today. And that would be, in essence, a transcendent version of the traditional theology. Yes. In, in giving this transcendence. That then, then we'll take flight. <laughs> so the answer I like to give to the question, is, is there God, is... Not yet. <laughs>